Hi, this is Abhishek Yadav from Section D. Uh, with respect to upcoming Bengal elections, I have chosen the topic of Bengal economy. What are the causes of its downfall and the possible measures that Bengal can take? 100 years after the fall of the Mughal Empire, Bengal witnessed frequent, frequent rebellious uprisings. The torment and atrocities of East India Company had made the people's life miserable. But before East India Company set foot in India, Bengal's textile industry was renowned worldwide. In, 19, in 1720, around 1.5 million tons of Bengali textiles were exported to Europe. The industries in Bengal were severely affected by colonialism and partition. The Industrial Revolution of Britain introduced new technology, and the Bengal industry, textile industry couldn't compete with it. After partition, the jute factories that manufactured jute cloths still operated in Bengal, while the actual jute mills that produced this jute were, created, were located in East Pakistan. After Pakistan, uh, after partition, it became difficult for these factories to acquire raw jute. And with the worsening conditions, East Pakistan imposed export duties on raw, raw jute. Due to this, uh, the quality of jute declined in India while its price soared. Despite partition, colonialism, and the other factors, Bengal's economy remained strong. In 1960, West Bengal's economic performance was better than that of Maharashtra. It is, it is very important to note that Bengal's NSDP was better than Maharashtra and best when compared to the rest of India. But over time, Maharashtra took over to Bengal and the gap between them widened. By 1960 and 2030, Bengal's growth rate was lower than that of all India growth average. The key factor that it contributed to unfold in Bengal's economy was the first, the decline in its industry, the second, the poor infrastructure, and the third was low collection of taxes to the government. So we look, first we looked into the factors uh, which affected the decline in its industry. In 1955, Bengal accounted for around 24% of India's industrial production and 27% of industrial employment in the country. But by 20, uh, 2007, these figures fell to 3.9% uh, and 4.9% respectively. Not, not just that, even the contribution of Bengal's economy, industry to Bengal's economy also fell. In 1960, the industry contributed around 20% to Bengal's economy and the figure dipped between 1960 and 1995. If we consider the time period between 1960, the three factors that were responsible for the conditions of Bengal industry. The first factor was the India-Pakistan wars that took place in 1965 and 71. These wars reduced the government's investment in railways, and we can see that between 1963 and 1976, it has decreased by 10%. Government and investment was necessary for the development of engineering industries. More the government invested in railways, the greater would be the need for engineering industries because the investment would have created the need for building wagons and installing electric equipment. But this, in, this didn't happen and it led to fall of Bengal's engineering industry and consequently its economy. The second factor was the domination of left political, left political parties in Bengal. In 1969, the state, uh, the 1969, the first elections where the CPI won more seats and the Indian National Congress and left parties had degrading impact on Bengal's industries. As you can see that between 1967 and 70, the number of industries and the number of people in the, in the industry witnessed a sharp decline. It was due to strikes and lockouts. The third factor was the trade equalization policy introduced by the government of India in 1956. Under this policy, railway freights for minerals like coal, iron were made similar across it. That meant if you want to transport coal from Bengal to Maharashtra or from Bengal to Bihar, the railway would cost, the railway cost would be the same. The impact was this, that the companies that were based in mineral producing industries like Bihar, Odisha and Bengal weren't obliged to remain in those states. They could simply set up manufacturing plants in Maharashtra, Gujarat, as they had far better facilities in bigger ports. That's, that, that is the reason why industries left Bihar, and Odisha and Bengal and moved to Maharashtra and Gujarat. Researchers have shown that this policy also had a deprecating impact on industries of Western India. After the em uh, emergency in 1975, the left government ruled Bengal between 1977 and 1991. The small-scale industries succeeded at providing jobs, but it hampered the growth of local industries. This was due to their poor quality and service and delivery. The, organ, the unorganized companies might do the job, but they lack the money and there is no room for innovation. As Bengal's economy was dominated by unorganized comp uh, companies as compared to the uh, organized industrial companies, it couldn't innovate and flourish. Another ma major reason that was mentioned was the poor infrastructure. A research paper showed that in 1975, Bengal's infrastructure was far better than India and it declined in 1997. The two researchers, Rai Chaudhary and Basu, assert that the poor public infrastructure could be the cause of lack of state funds 
there is the that is the same problem our current central government is facing in this covid situation and the uh, the, the reason was that bengal's public sector was in a lot of debt most of the funds that the government collected went to paying the government employees and the government wasn't collecting enough tax as there was not a lot of industries and not a lot of people on salaries so the the government of west bengal had to borrow a lot of money to pay the salaries that's why the west bengal's debt to gross gdp product ratio was higher compared as uh, was higher as compared to the other states in 1997 that is the reason the government couldn't spend enough money in infrastructure apart from infrastructure it was also difficult for companies to set up uh, set up a plant in bengal as acquiring land had become difficult as west bengal had no uh, records of the uh, land ownership also due to the unorganized companies bengal might face the problem might not face the problem of employment bengal the problem that bengal faces is of income or unorganized companies can easily hire and fire and similarly uh, they pay on daily basis in 2017 bengal's unemployment rate was lower than that of the national average but many in bengal are casual laborers which mean they do not have a steady monthly income but have to look for work every day apart from this bengal's finance financial situation is still struggling for example bengal's tax to gdp ratio is higher than national average this doesn't mean that bengal hasn't made any progress it uh, it wasn't uh, the bengal has progressed a lot but in terms of social indicators be it the literacy rate infant mortality rate access to safe drinking water and toilet some of these indicators in in bengal exceeds the national average this was due to the different policies brought by the state government over the large period to improve it, its economy bengal needs to solve the issues that it has been facing for different uh, for a large period of time the first one is infrastructure doesn't get uh, uh, enough attention so the bengal should the bengal government should uh, set up a uh, infrastructure fund and ask uh, borrow money from uh, various organizations like imf or w bank to build the necessary infrastructure uh, in the bengal and we can see that in 2020 budget presented by the west bengal the spending on infrastructure of bengal was lower than that of the national average but bringing the development and this infrastructure would not be easy as uh, as the nation as well as also the west bengal has been suffering due to gst re reforms and demonetizations also there is a there is a problem of devaluation of money from the central the, the consolidated fund of india to the bengal so this factors has contributed a lot in the decline of the industry to promote growth and industry many factors need to be addressed the second one is the organized manufacturing sector it is still very common to have many or unorganized manufacturing plants in bengal whereas there is a lack of industries in bengal the government needs to attract uh, investors from india as well as foreign to set up uh, institutionalized and organized manufacturing plants and also the situation uh, financial situation is challenging as the government doesn't collect a lot of taxes the government should try to get out of this loop of not having the finance to develop infrastructure and then struggling to build industries the government should take up loan from the uh, public sector banks as well as the uh, different different uh, organizations over the world to develop it in infrastructure which would increase the income of the uh, income of the people which would lead to more and more infrastructure and more industries being set up once these issues are addressed we might see a, a change in bengal and its economy